Welcome back, my friends, to the show that never ends. We're so glad you could attend. Come inside, come inside. These are words from the song called Carnival Nine from Emerson, Lake, and Palmer. It expresses one side of me where I'm happy to see so many people in here. We are glad that you could attend. Come inside, come inside. However, it also expresses the other side of me where we have to be here yet again to attend the show that never ends. This is the 10th year for the Transgender Day of Remembrance here in Atlanta. I've been at all 10 of them, and I would like not to have a reason to come here ever again. We want this show to end. Over the 10 years, we have cried enough tears to refill Lake Lanier. We have read names of Georgians. We have read names of children. We have read names of people who love trans people. And we have read names that covered every category of people under the transgender umbrella. And one year, we even read the name of Fredeline. We cried a few years ago when Pastor Paul read the story of my friend Alice. And when we heard the name of Precious Armani announced. I have had to have this saddest day of the year marked on my calendar so I won't miss it. I wish I could miss it. I'm sure the rest of you do too. However, this year something wonderful and exciting has happened. Everybody's already talked about it. On October 28th of this year, President Obama signed into law the Matthew Shepard James Byrd Jr. Hate Crimes Prevention Act. This new law added gender identity, sexual orientation, gender, and disability to the existing 1969 federal hate crimes law. And as much as people might want to think, the federal hate crimes law does not increase sentencing. That has to be done at the state level. When I saw the president take pen to paper, and then the press coverage he did later that day, tears formed in my eyes. I could envision Matthew Shepard, Gwen Araro, and Precious Armani standing next to the president as he spoke, and then guiding his hand as he signed <coughs> the document. It took us 10 years to see this law passed. I know. I was there from in the beginning. My first ever lobby days was in May of 1999, when the bill was first appeared in our community. Many of us crisscrossed the offices on the Hill lobbying Congress to include us on, in this bill. It was just seven months after Matthew Shepard uh, was murdered, four months after Robert Eads uh, died from me medical neglect and a month and a half before Private Barry Winchell would be beaten to death at Fort Campbell because he loved a trans woman. I have seen the transgender community go the hill after, uh, year after year, making sure that we educate Congress people on why we needed to be included. They finally got it a few years ago, but the president at the time would never have signed that bill. Everything needed to be in place before history could be made. In October, everything was in place. Believe it or not, my oldest son helped make this bill possible, or at least I would hope to think so. Let me tell you how that happened. In, 19, in 2003, Robert joined the Marines. This is a picture of him when he, when he joined. A year later, he began his first tour in Iraq, and he got a chance to talk to people at home and give people a call, and he called my mother one time, and he said these ten words, Grandma, I sometimes worry about the safety of my father. Now think about this. I couldn't believe what, what he said, and my mother told me it was because I'm trans. Here's a young man in a war zone. He's patrolling the streets of Baghdad, where any moment he can get killed, and he's worried about his trans father 
walking the streets of America. He, could have, he should have been worried about his own safety. But he felt that I was in more danger than he was. If that didn't il illustrate the impact of hate crimes on our community, I don't know what did. Now you can bet I used this story on my next lobby, <coughs> and so did many others. We saw hardened Republican aides sit up and listen when we told this story. We've even seen some legislative aides cry. So we know we were getting to them. They even used the story in a press conference when they first introduced the uh, fully inclusive end or hate crimes bill. Did it help? I really don't know. But the day Obama signed that bill, I called my son and thanked him. Tonight we read, some people said 74, some people said 84. I, I looked at the list, it looked like 94 to me. Somebody told me 101 names. Many of them are unknown people in Latin American countries. There are at least 13 names people here in the United States. This increase is more than three times of what we had in previous years due to better reporting over the internet. We cannot be complacent about these murders and now that we are covered in this new law, it will not change the attitude of people overnight. We will be here at the show that never ends for many years to come. At least now, the country has said that we will not tolerate you beating these people up or killing them. At least, that's a start. Thank you.